With a click of a button, I can yap looking down and draw, or another click, and I can yap while staring into your soul. Hi, I'm Bambi, and welcome to my universe, the Bambus. Have you wanted to try making a PNG tuber model? Whether it's for streaming or just for fun, then this is a very super basic guide for dummies like me, and it's perfect to get you started and off your feet. Because if I can do this, you can do this too. Step one, prime your brain. This isn't a step for mastery. This is literally, as I said, for priming our smooth brains for the next steps. It's to get a general feel and vibe for the program to see how other people open it up, how they interact with the various tools, and to just get used to how the interface looks. And trust me, even if it feels like you've learned nothing, it will help. I've put some recommendations of different videos you can check out in the description below, so please go watch them. But come back when you're done. Step two, shake your brain. Get your doodle tools out, whether it's on paper or digitally, and just draw or write down exactly what you're trying to achieve with this model. In my case, I wanted to use my new look that I made or rather redesigned earlier this year, which honestly could be a video all on its own. Anyways, I wanted to have a more engaging way of communicating my art, my writing, and my process on the internet. I also wanted an option to add in a tablet for drawing, since that's what I spend my free time doing the most. Outside of corporate suffering, of course. On top of that, I wanted to be able to look down while drawing, like this, with a cute little hand animation to just add a little bit of pizzazz to it. I also wanted to be able to stop drawing while I was looking up and yapping. I just thought that this would be just the bare minimum to get me started. Step three, prepare your ingredients. Now that you've got a vision, it's time to either commission another artist or start drawing a final version of the avatar you want to use yourself. Since it might be more effective to show rather than tell, I made this quick little slime model of myself, a blend blue vu. If you know, you know. And honestly, it only took about 20 minutes to draw. I would have shown the process for this big model and the one I made for my sister, but this whole video tutorial honestly was a very spur of the moment thing. I just wanted to be able to share what I learned because I was so surprised that if I counted the hours, it only took for all three of these models probably less than half a day. And this is coming from someone who's never tried something like this before. So it only goes to show just how much easier this whole process is than most people think. So don't be scared or just do it scared. Now back to the tutorial. So this is a really important note when drawing the final design. You need an extra asset for the eyes and the mouth since you want your eyes to be able to blink or change and your mouth to open while you talk. And this is the bare minimum, of course. You can add in an extra set of eyes and mouth for different expressions, whatever you're trying to convey, basically. So you can see here with my slime model that I've added an extra expression and I will show you how to do that in the later part of this tutorial when we talk about toggle settings. So for all three models, I kept rendering until I liked it. And since I was trying to overcome perfectionism, I stopped when I was about 80% satisfied. Be gone, perfectionism. And then I started the cutting process. Now this was definitely the most intimidating part for me. It's why I always avoided using programs like Live2D and Spine, even though they were things that I've always wanted to try learning. I think it was mostly coming from a place of the fear of cutting the wrong thing or the fear of not knowing what to cut or just cutting everything and then realizing that I haven't added enough bleed. Once I got started though, throwing myself into the deep end, it was a lot easier than I expected. Yes, I did make mistakes with the cutting process, especially with the big model, but it was really only a matter of just going back to your original file, make sure you keep your original file, and then just recutting. I realized I could go back as many times as I wanted to just cut and cut the various different parts. If I missed a part, I could just come back and just cut that part separately and then just add as much bleed as possible. So I can show you the files that I made for all three models. So you can see here for, let's start with my Bamblobu model. So I made sure that the heart in particular was separate to the connector since I wanted them to move separately. For my series model, I made sure to cut the ears separately, for example, so that they would have their own bounce. I also made sure to cut the little heart separately so that they would have their own jiggle as well. For the model I made for my sister, I made sure to cut out the tail, 
drawing the wings and horns on separate layers, as well as cutting the legs as well, so that they would all move at different paces to the main body. So once you've got your spread of different body parts, it's time to make sure that you label everything properly. You will thank yourself later, so please be as clear as possible. And you can see here my naming system, very simple, it's literally the body part. If you have more than one expression, you can put I1, I2, whatever floats your boat. But this is it. This is step three complete. You have prepared your ingredients. Step four, set the table. It's time to export all your parts as transparent PNGs. This will ensure they remain in the same location and in the same size relative to each other when imported into PNG Tuber Plus. If you haven't done so already, it's time to download the PNG Tuber Plus program. This is the one that I've chosen to go with, but there are definitely tutorials for other PNG Tuber programs out there. And the link is down below in the description. Once you downloaded the program, you will need to click into this button to leave the preview mode and enter into the editing mode. Then, if this is the first time you're opening it, there will be a default model present. You can remove it by simply clicking the main body and then clicking on the bin button. Now it's time for you to import your PNG files into the program. To do this, first click escape on your keyboard. This will open up the directory folder. Now you can move the PNG files that you've saved onto your computer into this folder. It's very important to remember that if you want to add new or replace any sprites, you will need to put them into this directory folder specifically. Otherwise, the program will not recognize it as an addable asset. Now, click the add new sprite button at the top, and then you can add each PNG one by one. It'll look super messy at the start, but just trust the process and add them all in. Now that everything has been imported, to select an asset, you can click control and then move the mouse wheel to freely zoom in and out. To reorder your assets, there is two ways. First, you can click this icon at the top to open up your layers menu, which will list out all your layers and linking hierarchy, which we'll go through in a bit more detail later. You can then use this menu to select assets by clicking on them, and then to reorder, press E to bring forward or Q on your keyboard to push it back. Alternatively, you can use Ctrl E or Q on a selected asset to move it forward or back accordingly. So after you've adjusted your layers to make it look like the original design, with the exception of the eye and mouth, which you will then need to adjust in the side menu to ensure the eyes and mouth change according to when you speak. Here's the settings to make your PNG tuber model blink and talk. For the mouth open, you need to click these crossed boxes until it displays this symbol. For example, if you set it to this symbol, then that mouth open asset will only appear when you talk. Here are the settings for mouth close, eye open, eye close. You can do a quick check with your mic on by clicking into the preview mode again and just talking just to see if it moves according to when you speak and when you don't. Here in this menu again, you can adjust the sensitivity that your model has to your voice and how long the mouth stays open while you talk by playing with these two sliders. You can also adjust your background color to transparent, a green screen, or any custom color. A green screen is particularly handy for video editing and streaming. You can also adjust the probability of blinking, the bounce force, and gravity. So definitely play around with these settings until it works for you. Now going back into editing, it's time to link your assets together. It's like adding a skeleton to your model, whereby how you link certain assets will affect the way they move based on what physics you add to it later, like squash and rotation. So just click this button at the top or click P to enter the asset linking mode. For most assets, they will be linked to the main body as you want them to move in relation to it, though you can always experiment with this. For example, most of the Bamblobu model was attached to the main body, which I want to bounce in sync with each other. Before the heart, I wanted it to be connected to the little connector piece only, as I only wanted it to move in relation to this piece. You can also unlink a selected asset by clicking the unlink button here or pressing U on the keyboard. If you ever forget a keyboard shortcut, then you can click the I info button at the bottom and it'll open up a pop-up screen with some instructions. To add new expressions or outfits, click on a number from zero to nine on your keyboard. This will be the button you press anytime you wanna activate a particular expression or outfit change. It will also automatically highlight the corresponding number in the bottom corner here. For example, if you click on number two, it'll show costume two. And from there, you can add in new assets. Otherwise, you can go into the specific assets you want to hide and then deselect number two in the corner. Those assets that you deselected against that number will be hidden from view. 
If you want to unhide an asset, then you simply click that asset again and then click on the number until it's highlighted. And that's how you can easily add in new expressions and outfits. And you can add in costume bounce here from the preview menu so that you can add a little bounce when you do a costume change. So this is an entirely optional step, but if you want to add more flavor to your model with custom animations, then you first need to create a frame by frame animation. For example, this hand animation is only five frames to keep it lightweight and simple. I made sure to export them as individual PNG files in the correct order I want them to be animated in. Then I opened up a free web-based program called Sprite Packer and the link is down below. Make sure you select horizontal here and then you can just dump in all your PNG files. This will automatically spit out a sprite sheet for you, which you can then download as a PNG file. Make sure, like I said before, to press escape when you're in the PNG Tuber Plus program to open up the directory and then move in the sprite sheet into this directory folder. Then you can add it in as a sprite, go into its settings and then adjust the sprite frames to the number of frames in your animation. Then adjust the animation speed to your preference and boom, you've upped your model's coolness factor. You can do a lot of cool things with this feature, but there's definitely no hurry at the start. You can just add these in later down the line. Just remember not to go too overboard with the animation length and the size of your asset, as this is still a lightweight program. Don't forget to save your work by clicking into here and saving your model. Step five, cook. Active movement affects the motions that activate when you talk, and we can go through them one by one. To add bounce to your model when you speak, just move the squash slide until it feels right. Positive values mean that it will squash out and negative values means that it will squash inward. Rotational drag refers to how much the asset will rotate either to the left or right. For example, with the Tato model I made for my sister, I made sure to add this effect to the tail to give the motion that it's wagging back and forth when she talks. When you select an asset, it will show a little dot. This is the point that your asset will rotate and move around. But you can easily adjust this by holding O and then using the WASD keys to adjust the positioning. This can be especially handy for little accessories that you want to move around a much smaller point. You can further customize this by adjusting the rotational limit, min max, at the bottom here. The wheel will show you a preview of how it'll rotate based on your adjustments as well. Drag will add more delay to your movements, making them a bit more slower and grounded. You can add passive movement to your model as well, which can give a breathing or floating effect like I did with my sister's model. So looking at the menu below, X amplitude refers to how far the asset will move horizontally, Y amplitude refers to how far the asset will move vertically. The X and Y frequency refers to how fast this movement will be. Step six, serve. To show off your new PNG tuber model to the world or just your friends and family, download or open up OBS, create a new source by clicking the plus button here, then select window capture. Then when the pop-up window opens, just rename it to PNG tuber model and then click okay. It'll open up another window and then just choose the first drop-down menu. And from there, choose the window that says PNG tuber plus. Make sure in the program, your background color is set to green so that it can act as a green screen. Then click your new window capture source and then click on filters. This will open up a new pop-up screen. Here, click the plus sign under the effects filter box. Choose the chroma key option. This will then remove the green screen, allowing you to use it for streaming or to record over a different window screen capture. If you've used this tutorial to make a PNG tuber model, then congrats, you did it. Now go off and show your new PNG tuber model to the world. I'd love to see what you made, so please do comment below where I can go find it or tag me on Insta. Thanks for watching till the end and see you next time. Love and peace, Bambi. It only took three years and I can't be more proud of myself. Okay, next. No, we're ending. Goodbye. Bye. I won't be back.